God's personal bodyguard service. You know that you have angels assigned to you from the Lord. If you're a child of God, God has these angels out to protect you. It says that in the Bible. Psalm 91 verse 11 says, For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Isn't that a great promise that we have protection? Hebrews 1 verse 14 says, Are not angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who inherit salvation? You know, the Bible has many accounts of angels throughout the Bible and at least 20 incidences of angels interacting with humans throughout the New Testament. You know, but God doesn't give us very much information on angels and that's probably for a good reason. He doesn't want us to become obsessed with them, but he wants us just to be aware that they are there and they are protecting us and that we're not here by ourselves. Sometimes we think that we're walking alone and we're doing this life by ourselves, but the reality is, you know, we've got our angels there and We've got Jesus, we've got the Holy Spirit, we've got God with us, and also a crowd of witnesses. You know, that, that's quite a crowd that we carry around with us. I was, uh, when I was on my walk this morning, I was asking the Holy Spirit to put me in remembrance of, of times in my life where Psalm 91 has become a reality. And I was reminded of the time when I was in my 20s. I'm in my 30s now, but when I was in my 20s, I was wild. I mean, I was actually a wild person. I had... I was fiercely independent. I had like no limits. I, I was just fiercely independent. Nothing would stop me. I went traveling by myself. I'd just take my backpack on my, my days off. I'd take my backpack and I'd go to places in Europe. I'd go to Paris. I'd go here. I'd go there. Um, I also had a motorbike. When I first passed my motorbike test, I had this cruiser style motorbike. And this was a rickety old bike that didn't cost me very much. I used to take it up and down the country in most rural places of Scotland and I would practice my high speed cornering on bad weather days and I fell off that bike quite a few times. And also that old rickety bike would break down at the side of the road and in the middle of nowhere and God's hand was on me at the time. <laughs> then I decided to move across the world to Australia and when I was in Australia, still in my twenties, I went backpacking by myself to some countries I probably shouldn't have been by myself in. I also had a motorbike there and, and I had a great motorbike, but still a cruiser. And I remember I was relocating from state to state and I would drive that motorbike from state to state through rural places in the middle of nowhere. And you know, I wasn't actually following God the way I should have at the time. But my mum used to say that Cheryl's angels work overtime. The reality was my mum worked overtime. The prayers of a praying mother were protecting me on the other side of the world. I remember the scariest time actually for me was when I was driving my motorbike from state to state in the middle of nowhere through these big long stretches of road that you can only get in Australia. And my little tank only held about 100 miles worth of fuel. <laughs> and those those um, gas stations were about 120k distance apart. And God help you if you missed a gas station or if the gas station had no gas. And that was scary for me. And I remember one night when I was doing that and I was in my twenties and I was blonde and I decided to pull up and spend the night in one of these gas station motels with all these truckers. <laughs> oh my word, I slept with my eyes open that night. I had my, my door bolted, chairs up against the door, windows bolted. <laughs> Now, if you're listening to this and you're a trucker, I ain't saying that truckers are bad. I'm just saying I watched too many scary movies back then. <laughs> but I was not alone with the truckers because I had my angels. I had my angels protecting me. They were lifting me up in their wings and guarding me. And just other crazy, crazy stuff that I used to do. And the Lord always protected me. I just want to encourage you, if you've got <laughs> wayward children or if you've got prodigals out there, you know, your prayers are powerful and effective. The Bible says the prayers of a righteous man are powerful and effective and God's angels do work overtime. They never sleep. They never slumber. So I never fret now knowing what I know now, having the knowledge that I have angels encamped around me at all times. I never fret if anything doesn't happen in my favour. You know, if, if I miss the flight or if I miss the bus or if I'm sitting in heavy traffic and it's not moving the way I want it to move or if I'm late home from work or if I don't get that job I applied for or if that relationship doesn't work out the way I want it to or if I don't get that house that I went to buy, I don't fret because I know that God is with me and he's probably saying, I'm, I'm pulling you away from that situation. That's not for you, honey. I know, I know what you don't know. 
God's protecting me. God knows everything. Isn't that great news? Well, I'm going to read Psalm 91, the whole of it, to you, because it's just a great psalm. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, in God whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by the day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it won't come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge, you will make the most high your dwelling. No harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels commanding you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I come before you in Jesus name. And Lord, I thank you for today. Lord, I just want to thank you for your protection and for your angels who are encamped around us, Lord God. And not just us, but the angels that are encamped around our homes, over our families, over our children, over our loved ones, over our cars, over our workplaces, Lord God. Your word says, no harm will befall you and no disaster will come near your tent. Glory, hallelujah. We give you praise for that today, Father God. I just want you to put us into remembrance, Father God, today of all the times that you have protected us. And just encourage us, Father God, that you walk with us. You talk with us, you never leave us, and we're never alone. We give you all the glory, and we give you all the honor and the praise today. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Guys, you have a great day, and just watch what you say, because you remember those angels are listening in on your conversations. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.